What's going on guys? In this video I'm going to answer one of the most common and politically charged questions I get, which is, which editor should I learn? So, as you know, I generally recommend starting off with whatever will get you editing text on the command line in the easiest possible way. For the videos that I do, because all the tutorials I do are starting with Ubuntu, I recommend the thing that's built in there, which is Nano. It's fine. There are some issues with it. I think there were some file corruption bugs. It's not the most efficient editor, but it's fine. No one should feel bad for using Nano. I see people feeling bad about it. Everyone's gonna start somewhere. Nano is the first step, and then learning VI is the next step. It's just something to get you started with command line editing. Uh, VI is sort of this mode-based editor, and it also happens to be installed on every single system that you will ever log into, most likely, as a sysadmin. So that's a great place to start, sort of the easiest thing possible to get you into the command line, Nano. And then once you're comfortable editing text files with that, switch to the thing that's universally available, which is VI. At that point, you're going to want something that's maybe a little bit easier to use and more powerful in a traditional IDE-like way. That class of editors has software like Sublime Text, TextMate, Atom. There's a bunch of these, and they're great. They're very easy to get started with. They allow you um, to edit like larger projects, things that aren't just a single text file very easily, and you'll probably find yourself jumping into those and just being very productive very quickly. It can be easy to kind of get stuck there, there's nothing wrong, you're not really stuck. You're just leaving some efficiency on the table. So that's a comfortable place to be for doing software development, for you know rewriting larger things like web apps, you know, anything that you might touch, including just regular old software development. They allow you to install packages um, to do certain things to like transform your text or you know parse and modify things that you're working on, they can be very, very useful and they add a lot of power over things like Nano uh, and just VI. There's a third class of editor, and that's the sort of editor of a lifetime. The ones that you can kind of invest time into to get huge returns from in terms of efficiency. Your job, if you're in IT, is essentially transforming your thoughts into text files in some weird way. Vim and Emacs are two of the oldest and most full-featured editors around. They're, they've been around in some form or another for probably more than 40 years now. They have an enormous learning curve, although you can get started in a weekend and then just forcing yourself to use it for a week or so. You'll start to see how slow you've actually been by hunting around with a mouse and clicking on things, selecting things that way. They give you incredible power and extensibility you can script them, create plugins, use plugins that other people have written. They will just, it's an order of magnitude speed improvement over that basic operation of turning a thought of how something should look into some text that describes how it looks or how it behaves. That's the kind of progression that I recommend. I myself am partial to Emacs. I think it's an incredible software program ecosystem, <laughs> language, <laughs> editor also, sometimes. What, what's that joke? Emacs is a great operating system. The only thing it's missing is a, a good text editor. <laughs> it's actually a great text editor. That's the one I would choose. Like, there's nothing wrong at all from going with going from VI uh, to Vim and then like using the extra features there. Um, it's just that I myself have chosen Emacs for a wide variety of reasons, some of which are like habit. I really liked it. I like the workflow. I like the extensibility. I love Lisp in general. I think it's an amazing language. Using Emacs makes me real efficient and makes me feel good. So, you know, whatever floats your boat. So that's the progression. The simplest possible thing to get yourself into the command line and just able to complete basic tasks there. Then VI, because it's a little more complicated to learn, but easy to do in a couple hours, like learning the basics. And then you can kind of do things anywhere in the operating systems world, at least the Unix operating systems world. And then graduating, graduating. You will likely move to one of these middle editors that are like fancy IDEs. It's like the siren song of these things is really powerful. Oh, plugins, and you can still use your mouse. Like, oh, it's easy and powerful. And it is, and it's a great middle ground. And then on the top end, or for you, flipped around, that would be over here, 
Um, on the top end, you've got Vim and Emacs, which pretty much rule that part of the editing world. They all have their advantages and drawbacks. You should try them out and see how they work for you. Uh, I allude to this in some other videos, but I don't recommend learning all these things at once. So while you're learning the basics of Linux or the basics of programming, don't try to learn one of these editors that has an enormous learning curve. I think that's where these the middle class of editor is really good for that because they allow you to be productive and to focus on other things than how the fuck do I use this editor. It's all about managing the learning curves that you're dealing with at that moment. Programming is hard enough as it is. Certainly the first time you learn about it and learning your first language. It's brutal. It's brutally hard. And things that then seem simple in retrospect are like, will take you days to get through. Adding another enormous learning curve for how do I even type this stuff in is not going to be good for your motivation or your productivity. So choose one serious learning curve at a time. Maybe I should make a separate video on that, but that's pretty much the essence of the idea. All right, so I hope that's helpful. I hope that gives you some new stuff to experiment with, look up, watch some videos about, and, uh, you know, just start doing this stuff. Start, you know, download Vim, start using it. Download Emacs, give it a try. See what it can kind of do. Look at some screencasts of people using these editors in a skilled way. See which ones seem cool to you and try them out. Don't just read pro con lists. There you go. If this has been helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more delicious sysadmin stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.